It's the final edition of Weather for Weather Geeks during the month of January. We're getting set to head into the final stretch of meteorological winter, the month of February. We're going to talk about that February forecast in just a moment, but first, as you would expect on the final day of the month, let's review some numbers. All of these numbers valid at the Youngstown Warren Airport in Vienna. Of course, when it comes to snowfall in particular, your mileage can certainly vary across our area. At the airport, we finished with 9.1, we nickeled and dimed our way up to 9.1 inches. Now, average is about 19 inches in January for Vienna and Trumbull County. But the largest one-day total at the airport was about 10, 10 days ago, 3.2 inches worth of snow. So very paltry numbers for the month of January. This is actually the second, or, or the year two, I should say, of the last three years in which we've had very small amounts of snow in January. We also had this in January of 2021. 2022 is a little closer to average, but 2021 and 2023, very snow-free Januarys. Temperature is a big story as well. We'll wait for the final, final numbers at midnight tonight, but it looks like we're going to end up between 8.5 and, and 9 degrees warmer than the average. Today was the coldest day of the month, and this high of 26 today was an early morning high. We spent most of the afternoon in the lower 20s. Look at all the warmth, especially during the first, oh, two and a half weeks of the month. We've had a few more blue boxes of late, but nothing extreme. None of these numbers, you know, break the bank or anything. It's just been uh, so remarkably warm in January that a day like today really, really stinks. So, again, uh, these numbers aren't final just yet, but uh, January will finish probably either in fourth or fifth place on the list of warmest Januaries on record. 2006, the most recent very warm January, although 2020 is not far down the list. The warmest date back to the 1930s. All right, looking at the February, these are the forecasts from the Climate Prediction Center, and I like what they have. Uh, not much change in the overall pattern. There's going to be times in which it's going to be cold. There's going to be times that it snows in February, but on balance, the pattern favors sustained cold in the western U.S., and milder than average days outnumbering the colder than average days once again in the eastern U.S. Also, the precipitation outlook, not that dissimilar from January. It's probably going to be a wetter than average month. Now, this is total precipitation, so all forms of precipitation, so some of this will be snow. But, of course, we've had quite a bit of rain in January as opposed to snow, and I expect February to follow suit with below average snowfall, unless we get just one random big storm. You can have that sometimes. In an overall not very snowy pattern, you can have that one storm that gives us a 12 inch amount, and all of a sudden your numbers are a little bit skewed, but on balance, we're not gonna have very many snowy days in the month of February, it looks like at this point. All right, as we uh, take a look at the final evening of January, trouble remains in the Southern US. You never like to see pinks and purples on the radar, and. And no surprise, we still have winter weather advisories, ice storm warnings, in effect, from uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway uh, through the mountainous areas of West Virginia, a good chunk of Kentucky, and then especially down towards Memphis and Little Rock and Dallas. That's going to be a corridor that's going to continue to have problems with freezing rain accretion, ice accretion, over the next uh, 48 hours or so. Probably the heaviest amounts will be in Oklahoma and Texas. There could be some half-inch ice accretion numbers, that will certainly be enough to bring down trees and power lines and continue to cause travel disruptions. In the meantime, our weather pretty benign as we start the month of February. Tomorrow will play out a lot like today. There'll be some clouds early, a fair amount of sunshine in the afternoon, but pretty cold. In the meantime, we have a cold front heading our way at the end of the week. And in between uh, now and the end of the week, we're going to have a brief warm up on Thursday. I could have analyzed a warm front on this map, but uh, warm front on, on Thursday is probably out here. We're into a southwesterly flow. We'll get into the upper 30s on Thursday, but that's a pretty brief warm-up. Warmth like that's going to come back by Sunday and next week. But in the meantime, this cold front really means some business, and this is a true Arctic air mass plunging south and east. There'll be a, a period in which we'll be fair game to see flurries and snow showers Thursday night into Friday. With this kind of intense Arctic cold, Someone's going to get some accumulating snow out of this. More than likely, it's going to be primarily focused on, on, the, on the main snow belts of northeast Ohio, northwest PA, and southwest New York. But could someone in our TV viewing areas see a, a small accumulation? That's going to be possible for a lot of this. For a lot of us, I should say, this will be flurries and a lot of cold air and some brisk winds as well. What a nasty day coming up on Friday. Wind chills probably below zero a lot of the day. Air temperatures mostly in the lower teens in the afternoon. And I think we'll flirt with zero in parts of the area. Friday night into Saturday morning. But as I mentioned last evening, this is just kind of a glancing blow as far as the true hideous cold um, 
couple of hours, few hours to our north and east, it's going to be a lot colder. Uh, 12 below, one model depiction of things in Syracuse, Albany 12 below. There's going to be some sheltered valleys in upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine that get down into the 30s below zero late Friday night into Saturday morning, even as far south as New York City. They're going to be flirting with the goose egg as the weekend gets underway. But in all of these locations, including our location, it's going to be a fast turnaround at the end of the weekend and early next week. And I'll tell you, I see a lot of highs in the 40s, if not the 50s, in our future as we uh, get into the second week and probably third week of February. It doesn't mean the winter's over. In fact, I'm not going to be surprised at all if things flip in March. Uh, but at this point, February, the last month of meteorological winter, is looking like a continuation, pretty much, of the January pattern. That'll do it for me tonight. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Tuesday night. I'll see you back here on Wednesday.